today on Tips, Tricks, and Tweaks, if Bill lets me use that name, that is. I'm going to show you how to do a, a Dusk DPF regen. Isn't that Saharan dust interesting? We're going to be working on the 2008 Sprinter Common Rail Diesel today. It's equipped with the big V6 and the diesel particulate filter. Thanks to the root of the problem, the mass airflow sensor, we've got a nice Boss OEM in here once again, and she's super happy. Uh, but we had a bad mass airflow sensor causing her to run. I'm gonna go with too rich since it clogged up the soot content. And as you can see, I only went 370 miles on this tank, which is horrible. That equates to about like 16 or 17 miles per gallon. I mean, I've never gotten that low in a Sprinter before. I might as well go back to my Chrysler Sebring. Well, like I said, thanks to that mass airflow sensor that we discovered was bad, we have fixed the problem, hopefully. Uh, but before we really call it fixed, we want to go ahead and clean her DPF filter because once again, she's back up to over 500% full. Let me show you how to do that in the DAS. All right, so in my DAS, I'm going to come over here to Control Units, Drive. I'm going to go to CDI 4, and that is because I have a 2007, 2008, basically pre-DEF Sprinter. If I had a 2010 DEF Sprinter, I would choose CDI 6, but um, because I've got a 2008 Sprinter, I'm going to pick CDI 4. Of course I've read the safety notes. I want to go to actual values, diesel particulate filter, and I'm gonna check the fill level. And as you can see, soot content up at 41 again, and specified value is less than or equal to eight grams per liter. So we are way too full. So you're actually going to go to control unit adaptations, and then you're going to go to diesel particulate filter, and you're going to go to regeneration of the diesel particulate filter. Now you can do this yourself at home. I recommend that you take the engine for a drive first and get it nice and hot before you do this. Let's talk safety precautions with the exhaust. Mine is right here on the passenger side, right at the back here. You wanna make sure that it's blowing right onto concrete. You do not wanna do this on grass or dirt because this is very hot exhaust coming out of this. Your garage is open or closed. Do not back your sprinter in and point your exhaust into your garage. That is a horrible idea. You are burning things off. That's a lot of carbon monoxide just shooting into your garage. Right here, we're on the street. I've got my hazards on. The engine has already ran, so it's already up to temperature. Then you're going to come and just click continue. And it'll probably say this. I'm gonna hit yes. I'm not quite sure why it says that. But it's gonna take the engine speed up. Just for good measure. I'll apply the parking brake. The exhaust temperature is 570 degrees Celsius or about 1200 degrees Fahrenheit before it can begin the regeneration. This is why I said you need to get the exhaust pointed at concrete and make sure you steer clear of it for a while. The longer your drive and the hotter you get it, uh, the less time it'll take to hit that 570 target. Now that it's reached that threshold, you'll see the time remaining starts to tick down. Now it's, it might be tempting to leave your van out here and let it do its thing, but be conscious, get a cold one, and sit out here with it and just enjoy the sound of your V6. If it quits on you, don't get frustrated because when you go back in, you see time remaining, did not reset. Once this is done, your soot content should be drastically lower. Sometimes you'll get this error. The only thing you can do is just, uh, there's a lot of these that you need to look at, but I've found that sometimes when all of these are okay, um, it just won't do it. So you just have to continue on and try again. It's really important that you get this to successfully happen at least once before you try and drive it again. If you find your regen not completing, another possible cause is that you're just too low on diesel. Put some diesel in and then try again. 
responsible cold one. I like Yingling because buying them supports the American Eagle Foundation. It's always important to protect bald eagles in their habitats. Yingling, please sponsor us when we're not driving. Always make sure you top up that cool before you do that. You can see that overflow. The engine's really working itself hard right now to try and burn off the soot particulate that builds up in the diesel particulate filter. If you don't take your Sprinter out highway driving, or you always drive your Sprinter in limp mode, it never performs this process. Now even once problems are fixed, it may still be necessary to do this to get your van out of limp mode. Uh, I was actually unable to get it to complete, but you can see I've gotten it low enough for the computer to not put me in limp mode now. So now what you want to do is take it on a good long highway drive and make sure that it actually does a regen itself while you're driving. So it's a new day and today Twinkie and I are going to take the 2008 Sprinter for a test drive to verify that the DPF regen fixed the limp mode problem. Uh, I'm not necessarily concerned about it performing another regen, but I am concerned with how quickly it fills back up and am I still in limp mode, do I feel like I'm low on power, etc. Now I'm optimistic that because I replaced the math, the DPF filter will perform normal regenerations and won't clog back up so quickly, but the only way to to truly know is to run it and find out. So much power that we skirted the tires coming out of here. I took it on a nice long highway drive and it was able to maintain over 75 miles an hour. Um, so let's check out what the soot content is like today. All right, so here I am in the AP200 and we're gonna read codes, no fault codes. Let's go to diesel particulate filter, fill level. And unfortunately the soot content is back up over eight grams per liter. We're up to 15.8 grams per liter. So unfortunately, this diesel particulate filter might be at the end of its life. It's probably time for a replacement or alternatives. Okay, so at idle, the three pressure values at the bottom should be within spec of each other. And if I increase the engine speed, you can see how much the exhaust back pressure jumps up and that's really not good. <laughs> I'm open to hearing what you guys think or what the best uh, deal or procedure would be for this. Uh, until next time, see you guys. cold one. I'm here in my driveway watching my van do a dusk DPF regen. <laughs>